Hi there, Jennifer Roberts here, this time to go over the graphics settings screen as of X-Plane 1150, where we added a new option to run X-Plane using Vulkan or Metal. This video was recorded in a preview copy of X-Plane 1150b1. Vulkan and Metal are low-level APIs that change how X-Plane talks to your graphics card. They are faster than OpenGL, which was the only option in previous versions of X-Plane. So if you check this box, you may see improved frame rate and reduced stuttering. Note that some plugins are not compatible with this option, so you may need to go back to OpenGL if you have plugin rendering issues. Using the Vulkan or Metal option also has specific driver requirements, and you can find more information about that in the Xplain knowledge base. Please also rest assured that OpenGL still works exactly as before, so even if you see rendering issues, or if your graphics card is not compatible with Vulkan or Metal, you will always be able to use OpenGL to run x 1150 and later. One final note on changes to the options here in the graphics settings screen. We adjusted the sliders as well as the rendering engine, so you may want to readjust your settings. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to go over the process for finding the best settings for your specific setup. I'll be using Vulkan on a Windows computer, but the steps will be basically the same with Metal on Mac OS. First, we'll need to check the box to use the Metal or Vulkan driver and restart X-Plane. Now we need to set up a flight that reflects how demanding your typical flight is. I'm going to choose an airport with pretty detailed scenery. The demo area, Seattle Tacoma or KSEA, is a great choice for that. I'm going to turn off all AI aircraft and clouds because they greatly impact the amount of work the sim has to do, which in turn impacts our frame rate. However, if these features, or a specific custom scenery or aircraft, are mandatory for your experience, it is a good idea to go through this process with them enabled just to see the impact they will have. Next, we'll go to the Data Output tab in the Settings screen and check the first box on the first line to show the frame rate on screen in the cockpit. Now there are a few different numbers displaying on our screen, but the one we're concerned with is this first one here, for the actual frame rate. And you can see it's about 66 frames per second right now. Now we're ready to start adjusting my rendering options. Remember that your settings will be limited by whatever part of your computer is the least powerful, whether that's the central processing unit or CPU, or the graphics card or GPU. X-Plane's rendering options are arranged so that the sliders that primarily affect the graphics card are on the left, while the settings that primarily affect the CPU are on the right. However, all the sliders in this screen work together, so we recommend you be very methodical when adjusting the settings here. Let's start by setting everything to minimum and unchecking all boxes. You can see my frame rate is higher now, so I have room to increase the settings. We're shooting to get our frame rate around 30 FPS. If it's a lot more than this, we're not looking at as nice a sim as we could have. And if it's much lower, we'll probably encounter delayed responses while flying. We'll start by adjusting the CPU heavy settings. First, we'll turn on parked aircraft, then we'll turn up the number of objects and reflection detail by one notch each. Go back to your flight and check the impact. So frame rate's a bit lower, but not too low, so we'll keep increasing these sliders by one increment each and checking the results. Keep in mind that the number of objects and reflection detail are very much cumulative. If you have minimal objects, you may be able to max out the reflection detail, but as you add more objects, and thus giving x more things to calculate reflections for, you'll need to dial down the reflections. On my machine, I hit about 30 FPS with number of objects set to maximum and reflection detail set to high. Now we'll switch over to tuning the GPU settings or the sliders here on the left side of the screen. We'll start with the texture quality slider. If you have a four gigabyte or more graphics card, you can probably start with max here. The less powerful your card, 
the lower you'll want to try setting this. We're going to go ahead and skip ahead so you don't have to wait through all the loading screens as I adjust this. In the end, I found I could move the slider to maximum before seeing a large hit to FPS. Now I'll adjust the visual effects slider. The very bottom of this slider is recommended only for computers that hover around our minimum system requirements. If your machine can handle it, using one of the top two settings will turn on HDR. HDR is required for things like spill lights in the 737 cockpit, so it's a great feature to have on. In my testing, I could increase this slider to max and still have my frame rate be in the mid-20s. However, I'm comfortable with slightly lower texture and effects quality in order to have some wiggle room as I fly and have scenery change. We recommend only increasing the anti-aliasing or adding scenery shadows if you get all the other rendering settings to a point you're happy with and still have a higher frame rate than you'd need. In the end, I decided that on my machine, X-Plane looked decent overall and ran at around 30 frames per second with these settings. And as a final reminder, the key to finding a good compromise in the balance of rendering options versus the frame rate is to set up the most demanding options you typically use, then increase the rendering option sliders one increment at a time to find your best settings. Then if the scenery is fairly light, or if the aircraft is not as demanding, you may see higher frame rates, but you'll know you don't have to constantly adjust them for your favorite payware aircraft or dense scenery pack. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.